It is November 24th, 2024. The Chicago White Sox enter the offseason as losers of the division series to the Baltimore Orioles. Take a look back. It was a devastating defeat. You see, we win the first two games in dominant pitching performances. 9-0 in the first game. Uh, a beautiful game pitched by Zach Wheeler and Jonathan Stever. Dean Kramer uh, and Ronald Blanco don't pitch well for the O's. Everybody's hitting on all cylinders. Um, the offense takes a step back, but we still eke one out at 2-1. to one. Cease pitches well. Um, and it seems like we're really going to cool down this Baltimore offense, which we do. Uh, you know, losing an extra innings hurts, but you're up 2-1. to one. Um, Christian Mania gets tagged with the loss. Then you lose another close one, 2-3 to three, in Baltimore. And now it's... An even series, 50-50 shot. You go back to Chicago um, and hope you win it. And we don't. We lose in the 14th inning, 2-7 to seven at home. Um, Jonathan Stever allows four innings, or four runs in an inning in the third. Uh, and even though Ryan McMahon was OPSing 1266 in the series, Tim Anderson was hitting well, too, up until that last game. Um... We, we lose another first-round playoff series. And now I, I talked about in the last episode firing Pedro Griffal if we have another disappointing performance. I think I want to wait one more year um, just because we did finish with the best record in baseball in the playoffs are a crapshoot. But this year, I think, will be make it, break it for this particular staff. I have Patrick Leland as the... Um, Charlotte Knights manager right now, and I'm, I'm looking to promote him, I think. I, I've promoted him already from Kannapolis to Birmingham, um, and I think he's nearly ready to come up. Um, and He'll bring up Jose Escanio and Nicky Delmonico. I think will be a great third base coach, um, former White Sox. So those are our contingency plans if these members of our staff do not turn out well. Um, so we go into the off season after another disappointment. Um, I know we're in twenty twenty four. So let's talk about what we did. Um, I traded Burt Cole to the St. Louis Cardinals for Jermaine Palacios. Um, Palacios was eligible to just be cut at no cost to us, and I get off um, the next two years at three million dollars for Cole. His stuff fell even more down to a thirty from a thirty five. And while he did have a good season for us, um, I think a lot of that was Babbitt luck. As you see, he was barely even above replacement level in the underlying metrics. So we get rid of his money. Um, I DFA Yolki Cespedes, who stays with us. Same with Ricardo Sanchez. Um, or actually, no, he's a free agent. All right, you know, sure. He pitched well. I actually might bring him back um, if he wants a minor league deal in the future, just as a depth left-handed starter. We decline the option year on Yol Makata. He's now a free agent. Um, I didn't extend the qualifying offer to him. I did do it to Tim Anderson and uh, Zach Wheeler, but they both declined. Um, we bring back Mark Leiter, Dylan Cease, Josh Spores, Austin Warner. Um, Liam Hendricks comes back at a one-year extension at $8.5 million. He wanted 10 earlier, uh, but I waited a bit, got him at 8.5, and, and that's a good number for him. Um, he was our best reliever last season, so I'm happy to bring him back. Uh, we DFA Jose Siri, who's now a free agent. He played very well for us in AAA, um, but he didn't have any options left, and I, I didn't see a path for him on the everyday roster, even if um, somebody like Robert were to get hurt. We trade Eloy Jimenez to the New York Mets after two lackluster seasons where he is barely an above-average bat last year um, and, and decidedly average the year before. He is still under contract for this season and then the team option next year, so we get off his money this season. Um, uh, there were younger outfielders that we'll take a look at in a moment that I wanted to get on the field. And for Eloy, we pick up Framber Valdez, who had a good season as a relief long man for the New York Mets, who did win the World Series. I'll look at the playoff bracket in a moment. Um, 3-3-90 ERA, he would slot in, I think, as the fifth starter at this point as a lefty. Um... And with our defense, I want another extreme ground ball pitcher. 
And we did pick up Mateo Gill, who I just put on the 40-man roster, who can play a good third base as a righty, um, as a backup to uh, Ryan McMahon. Gavin Sheets is now a free agent. Um, Tim Anderson rejects a qualifying offer. Makes some moves to the 40-man roster. Um, did I do anything else? No. So that's where we sit right now. I've brought up Alan Serda to the 40-man as the right-handed outfielder. Like I talked about before, he's the guy that could replace Eloy's production um, if this power and I project to the major league level. Lloyd L. Chappelle and Terrell Tatum will battle for the left, spe- left field uh, spot as a starter. I don't want to bring in a veteran. Um, I'd like these two players to prove themselves in spring training. Obviously, I think Tatum has the better skill set right now, and he's the better glove in left field. Um, but we'll see. The left fielders available in free agency and via trade are not very good. Uh, I could get a guy like Tyler O'Neill, who I think would be an upgrade over these two players, but for $17 million, I, I wouldn't want to spend um, for him. Teo Gill I talked about. Maui Ahuna also on the 40-man roster. If I can't bring back Tim Anderson, who is on my prior- priority list, we have enough money to re-sign both him and Wheeler. Um, Ahuna will get the majority of starts at second. McKinstry's still sticking around. I figured um, he's a utility guy. Even though he's out of options, he's still a lefty, and depending on how he plays in spring training, he might stick around in the 40-man. Bring up Wilford Varis as well as a right-handed option. Um, Wes Calf is also now on the 40-man roster after his amazing season in AAA. Still looking for a lefty catcher. Um, I have my eye on some guys. I'll, I'll look at the shortlist in a minute. And on the pitching side, I didn't add anybody. Um, but this is what we've got right now. Harry Ford is Rule 5 eligible. I'll think about adding him, but he's a third righty, and he performed so poorly in AAA. Drew Gilbert and Tyler Black are two more lefty outfielders, and I have so many of those already. Um, And then again, Jimmy Crooks could come up as the third catcher if I fail in finding a guy. Um, Here's the minor leagues. So first we'll look at the playoffs and how those ended. Um... The Orioles go to the World Series after beating us. They they beat the Mariners in five games, match up with the Mets, who win their second consecutive World Series after beating the Cardinals in the NLCS. Um, the Mets are a dominant powerhouse. They only lose two playoff games after starting in the Wild Card Series. Um, they wanted to make some moves like trading Valdez. They are severely in the red, so I expect them to make some trades. But they still have Verlander. They still have Scherzer. They still have Nola, Alonzo they extended, Lindor is there, Nimmo. Um, They are truly such a deep team, but the problem for them is that they have no prospects. They do have Alex Ramirez, who I've I've, I've tried to get my hands on this player. I've gotten an offer for him before, um, and he's a guy that I might look into as, you know, I'll take on a contract that you don't want to pay out anymore, and I'll take him as a prospect. Because I think with this skill set, um, with our outfield depth the way that it is, he could come up and be a really impact player for us almost immediately as a 21-year-old. You see what he did in AAA. Um, he has yet to debut in the major leagues. He's a player I have my eye on um, as the Reds, or excuse me, the Mets look to get off more money. Um, so here I'll show you my targets in free agency, offseason, trade, you know, period. There's nothing really on the trade block that'll evolve as it does. Um, right now, a lefty relief option I have in mind is Matt Moore. He wants $6 million, um, pitched okay for the Red Sox last year. We have some lefties in the pen, but I'd like one more. Omar Narvaez is the left-handed catcher that I, I'm looking at. He has good catcher ability, um, and he played well for the Mets defensively this year, not offensively. Uh, maybe if he comes back, excellent framer at catcher is Narvaez. So with him and Dingler, we would have a really potent one-two punch defensively, even if the bat, um, the bats for those two players were poor. Former White Sox, we could bring him back to the south side, um, and maybe he hits around an 85 OPS plus. That would be useful. And then, uh, once again, Zach Wheeler and Tim Anderson are two guys who I do want to bring back. We have enough money, like I said, but the problem is Wheeler wants this, um, and that's too much for me for a 35-year-old. And Anderson wants this, which t- isn't prohibitive, but at seven years, that's not something I, I would like to pay out. I would have liked it if he accepted the qualifying offer for one more season, but I understand why um, he would want to look for long-term money. 
I will continue to check on in on them throughout the off season, but it's becoming more and more as if um, it's not going to happen. I extended two contracts, one to Jeter Downs, a minor league deal. Um, he had a great year in AAA for the Nationals, came up for four plate appearances with them. He is still, you know, a good prospect kind of at 26, hasn't had a lot of time in the bigs, um, and he's a prankster personality class. So I think bringing him in, um, adding him to the 40-man, he does have an option you're left as a right-handed guy off the bench would be important. Nicky Lopez at 75 infield range, even though he was, I mean, negative two war, 26 OPS plus for the Angels this year, but he's so good defensively, just wasn't in L.A. Um, I want to bring him in. He has an option you're left on a really cheap $1.7 million deal just to see what he has in spring training um, and and see if he can unseat Nick Ahmed, who's the better hitter out of those two. So th- those are two contracts that I'm... I'm um, they're, they're not too expensive, and I'm happy about them, and, and we have enough space in the 40-man for two more infielders, maybe another outfielder if I find somebody. So that's what we're looking like right now. I think this is going to be... <laughs> I'm finally going to make a cut in one of these videos, not doing it all in one time. I'll get back to you um, once we get more into the off season and, and then make some deals. All right. January 15th, 2025. And we've basically wrapped up the off season here uh, with, with the Chicago White Sox. Um, if we look at the transactions, I don't know if the off season went how I would have planned it to go. Um, but you know, when does it ever? Um, so first off, the last time we, we, we talked, I claimed J.C. Correa on waivers just because uh, he was on a minor league contract, and this is a better player than you typically get on a minor league deal. He'll be AAA depth. Um, and then you see these two big trades. I trade uh, for Willie Adamas from Cleveland. We send away Tyler Black, who is bad for us in AAA this season. Um He's got really good eye, but not much else, and he can't play anywhere very competently. Um, and he's another lefty outfielder, which we don't need. Trade away Connor McCullough, who is nothing, um, no movement to speak of, no control. Adam Kerner, who I signed at the beginning of the sim to be a depth catcher. He's fallen off considerably, but he's okay in high A, I guess. And then Arxy Hernandez, um, who a lot of teams really wanted. Uh, for a long time. He hit well in the Dominican League. He was always the add-in to trades, so uh, I felt like I'd capitalize on that. And Adamus's salary is uh, retained. A lot of it is. Um, he was signed uh, $16 million for three more years. We're only on the hook for 10 um, and our payroll is p- pretty clean right now. So I wanted to bring him in. Um, and the reason that he's playing second base is because we failed to re-sign Tim Anderson um, as well as Zach Wheeler, as you saw. Tim Anderson goes to St. Louis um, at this deal, five years, $108 million with a team option in the last year with a $4 million buyout. I think I could have paid that contract, but I'm really worried about his eye. Um, You know, he doesn't walk. His walks fell off by 2% last season. Um, and his BABIP is always high. I, I think he's in for regression. This is like an abnormally high BABIP for him, 371 at this stage in his career. I would expect a season more um, like the one we got in 2023, 3-war, uh, 102 OPS+. plus. But now that he's at second base, his bat won't be as valuable um, as he would be if he was at shortstop. I just didn't want to pay that money to him. Um, and then Zach Wheeler gets... Four years, $81.4 million, which is much less than he wanted from me. Um, so I guess, you know, he he didn't really want to stick around at a certain point. Goes to San Francisco. Um, but we do pick up two supplementary first-round picks for these two free agents that we've lost, which is a bonus um, as we, you know, try and stay competitive but also try to replenish the farm. We go back to November. I also traded for Alex Lang, who the Tigers were willing to give away, even though he was one of the best relief pitchers in baseball last year. 
He comes into our bullpen um, for Ben Norman, who had a good season in high A, but it's 26 with these ratings. Um, so those first two moves were good. And this was before I actually lost Wheeler and Anderson. So they were just because they were good deals. Um, and at a certain point in, the, in early December, we lose Anderson and we lose uh, Wheeler. I do sign Matt Moore to a one-year contract, $3.8 million, as another lefty in the bullpen. Um, and then in the day of the Rule 5 draft, we trade Uelke Cespedes, who was Rule 5 eligible, and I didn't want to keep him on the 40-man. He's out of options. Or he, he still has one more option, but the ratings just aren't good for him anymore. Um, and he's good in AAA, but not with the bat, and I want an offensive outfielder. I was worried about him being taken in the Rule 5 for nothing, so I sent him and Kevin Dowdle, who I've talked about before. He was a 13th round pick um, in 2023, has improved as a player and as a captain. Um, they have him as a two-way pitcher right now. I don't know why. But I'm not confident that this bat will be anything more than a bench piece, and he's a lefty. So it's not like he's offering value as a right-handed platoon bat. Um, and he's unremarkable defensively. I, I've talked about him before. He he is a player that it seems other teams would want more than I do. It's not like he lit the world on fire in Double A last season. He was okay, though. Um, but we trade him and Cespedes for Anthony Siegler, who is a switch-hitting catcher, spent half a season in San Diego this year as their backup to Luis Camposano. 85 OPS plus, he's a leader, high intelligence, good catcher ability, good arm. I think he'll split time with either Dylan Dingler or Adam Hackenberg, depending on who wins the right-handed platoon job in spring training. He takes Elo Jimenez number 74, the same number he wore with the Padres. He came over to them um, in a trade with the Yankees at the trade deadline of 2023 for Ripken Reyes, who is um, you know not very good. But we, we make this trade, and then we also add, if you see... Benny Montgomery, who was a player that I had my eye on, he was traded from the Rockies to the Twins, then from the Twins to the Diamondbacks, from the Diamondbacks to the Padres, and now from the Padres to the White Sox. So he's been all over minor league baseball over the past two seasons. Um, I, I think he is going to settle in nicely into a consistent role for us. 65 outfield range, um, potential to be a gold glover at either corner outfield spot. He'll get a real shot in spring training to win um, a corner outfield job for us. Uh, he's on the 40-man as he was Rule 5 eligible. We claim Jalen Beeks off of waivers as another lefty relief option. I think the bullpen is, has been really solidified um, with the signings and trades we've made in this waiver claim. Two and a half war last year, 227 ERA, 91 innings, innings pitched. He has the ability to start, um, and he did win reliever of the year this year um, for the Rays and was an all-star. We do sign Nicky Lopez to that $1.7 million contract. He's more of a spring training invitation. We'll see. Um, Norhe Vera, why? What? I didn't put him on the 40-man. I'm not... I don't want him on the 40-man. He stinks now. No. So who is... What? Wait, hold on. Oh, this is 2024. We're in 2025. I was like, I didn't put Norhe Vera on the 40-man. Last move. We signed Walker Bueller. Um, a leader, high work ethic, was okay with the Mets in 75 innings after being traded from the Dodgers um, post-injury. He is our Zach Wheeler replacement because he only wanted one year at $12 million. Um, he's got some built-in bonuses for performance. And he'll be the uh, fifth or fourth starter, depending on how the rotation shakes out. He'll be a starter in our rotation. And I guess I should go into, um, we didn't look at the awards in the last part of the episode. Where are they? Mid-August, right? We did overhaul, um, we completely overhauled our uh, minor league coaching system. Playoffs, postseason. Here's all our coaches, our extensions. There we go. Okay. Gold Glove. Um, Ryan McMahon wins one for us at third base. Jeremy Pena wins the Gold Glove at shortstop, even though Nick Ahmed nearly had double the zone rating of Pena. 
Um, Beeks here wins the AL Relief Award, um, beating out Teodoro Ortega of the Ra- uh, the Royals. He's on the Rays. Edwin Diaz unanimously wins um, NL Reliever of the Year with a season that is, I mean, 1.09 ERA. Season ago, 1.31 ERA. Just ridiculous from Edwin Diaz, 105 stuff. Um, Silver Sluggers. Andrew Vaughn wins one for us, uh, and that's it. You can see Ian Happ had a good season for the Blue Jays after a year in Texas last season. Noel Marte, Ellie De La Cruz, and Spencer Steer kind of corner the infield market, um, mostly Dodgers and Reds here in the Silver Slugger. AL Rookie of the Year, Arturo Riazola, who was the Cuban-generated free agent, wins it for the Red Sox. And Jordan Lawler um, beats out Nick Gonzalez, who I had an opportunity to trade for earlier in the sim from the Pirates for NL Rookie of the Year. Colt Keith trailing behind. Um, used to be a Tiger. Jacob deGrom again wins the AL Cy Young with this season. Dylan Cease comes in second, though, takes seven first-place votes from him. Spencer Strider wins the NL Cy Young with Burns coming up behind him. Edwin Diaz gets one vote as a relief pitcher. And this is what I forgot to tell you all about. Andrew Vaughn won MVP. I, I said in the last video that I thought he'd place, but with his league-leading RBI, league-leading slug, and WRC+, plus, he beats out Adley Rutschman, who I said was going to be his main competition um, for the AL MVP. Jacob deGrom also gets two votes, and the 30th vote goes to Dylan Cease. So we take 21 of the 30 first-place votes in the MVP voting, obviously the playoff success was not there for us. Zach Wheeler also gets a mention towards the bottom. Um, but we take some hardware. Andrew Vaughn, MVP. Uh, I actually do want to check who the last White Sox MVP is. We can check the Hall of Fame results, too. Todd Helton gets in, and I manually put Billy Wagner in. He got 73.9% of the vote. In real life, I think he would have gotten in. Um, Beltre, Suzuki, Beltran, Andrew Jones kind of lagging behind. But if we go to League History, um, History Index Awards, American League Award winners. Who was the last White Sox to win? It? Jose Abreu in 2020. Okay, yeah, I should have guessed that quickly. But who was the last one before him, given that it was the shortened season? Dick Allen in 1972. So Andrew Vaughn is keeping up the um, legacy of Chicago White Sox first baseman Dick Allen, a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that does it for what we did in the offseason, I guess. Willie Adamas will be training at second base right now. Um, I talked about the battles we're having. Here's what the rotation looks like right now. Um, Giolito, Gray, Valdez, Bueller, Cease, I think is a good top five. And I think it could be stronger than if we had Wheeler instead of Bueller and Valdez. Uh, and then also we do have the young guys like Abbott and Mania who could challenge for a starting spot in spring training along with Stever and Williamson. Now, the last thing I want to do, um, actually, I do want to do this. How much money do we have left? $15 million. Um, do 30, and then leave a little bit of wiggle room. Um, no players on the top 100. We're back down to the 28th system in baseball. I still think Maui Ahuna should be in the top 100. Um, I think Carson Martini will be there soon, along with... Where's where's the boy? Where'd he go? Lastris? Oh, man, he... Wait, no. Okay, yeah, that's what our scout likes Lastra says. He should be in the top 100, I think. Winokur, maybe, but Jacob Walsh definitely should be, just based off their ratings. Um, Shane Lewis is a seventh-round pick who could be actually up pretty soon. But I wanted to go into international amateur free agency. Um, I've taken a different approach this season, given that you now have a better chance of signing more players um, so a guy like Julio Cordero, even though he has low work ethic, I'm going to offer him like $850,000. He wants six fifty. Maybe we'll get him with that. I'm going to go into Pasquale Dilemma, and I'm going to give him $470,000. I don't really think he's that good of a player, but at that cheap, I'm not going to pass it up. Luis Gallegos, I think, is a better offer. 
I'll give him like 570. Um, and this is what I've been doing recently after they overhauled the system um, to just bring in as much talent as possible instead of picking and choosing one guy who you think will end up being the best. You get more bites out of the apple this way. Give him that. And then I'll do this Japanese guy, Nimi, maybe? Or hit, we do him. Prado. No work ethic on him. I think we'll do Nimi. Um, 1.6. That's running up against... No, I didn't want to create a note for him. I want to offer you that much money. Okay, so we give out those offers. Um, Ricardo Sanchez might come back in a minor league deal, but we have the opportunity now to sign five international free agents instead of just one. Um, again, though, they could all kind of rebuff our offers and ask for more, in which case we'd have to abandon one of these guys. But I like this portfolio approach now uh, these days than the way I used to do it. Let's see if we get any of them. They all like it. See, yeah, Susumo Nimi, um, I don't have enough money to do that, $3 million from the Marlins. I think I'll hold on to that money and see if I can spread it over the rest of the guys we have. Ricardo Sanchez, I don't care. Um, Jesus Godinez, how much do you want now? 1.8, I'll give you like two. About a million dollars remaining. Julio Cordero, Rockies want him and they want Ricardo Sanchez. Give you that. And then sometimes you do strike out with this method, I will say. Godinez wants more. How much more? Enough that I can afford it still. So that's all the money we have left. But we do get Pascual de Alema. Um, we get Luis Gallegos. And I think we'll end up getting one of these two guys who we're involved in nego negotiations with. We'll see. Got our budget raised by $6 million. Narvaez, too late, man. We already traded for the guy we wanted. Cordero. Please. No. I don't have enough for $40,000. Come on. He's a guy I really wanted the most. But I guess that low work ethic, you know what, whatever. We'll see what happens. Dinez, I will offer you all the money we have left. Oh, Vera needs to go back down. Kevin Biggio leaves in free agency and the fans are disappointed. Goes back to the Blue Jays on a minor league contract. Okay. I know this is very exhilarating con uh, content. I just want to see if Godinez comes along. Susumu Nimi signs with Milwaukee for more than um, the slot that I even have, $5 million. I only have like 4.8 total. And Godinez signs. Okay. So that'll do it. We signed Godinez um, and the other two guys, Gallegos and Dilemma, um, and we only end up spending about $5 million. So instead of getting one player, we get three that have equal potential. Um, here's what the payroll looks like going into spring training. We talked about the staff. Godinez is now the 77th best prospect in baseball. Doesn't raise our farm system up, but um, still good to have him. I will end the video here. And the next video will be a preview of the regular season upcoming. Thanks for watching. Bye.